the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to talk about sim racing news and what is going on in the wonderful world of simulated motorsports. Welcome to the show. Happy Friday. I hope you have a great weekend plan. I hope you had a good week leading up to this show, and there's been a lot going on this week. Uh, things that we need to talk more about. We'll uh, talk about three wide coming up tomorrow. And lots of things going on in sim racing. Actually, not too much going on. Uh, we had some big news, uh, I think, on the personal front. Again, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's get let's get into the news, and then we'll let the stories speak for themselves. How's that for an approach to the show? So, starting off on iRacing, uh, Enzo Benito and Bentsy Benecki prevail in the intense BMW Sim GT Cup battle at Suzuka. So that lets you know some of the biggest names winning in the biggest combination uh, competition. That's, so that's Team Redline BMW winning the race. MSI Esport in second. VRS Kawanda in third place. And uh, that's with $2,400 going to the winning duo. So not a bad, uh, not a bad prize for, for a race like that. Uh, keep in mind, I want you to remember the name... Bense, I, I'm saying it wrong. I should put my disclaimer up. Bense, Bense Benecki. I always mess his name up. It's a hard name for me to say. I don't know why. Um, remember that name for a moment, though, because we're gonna, that's going to come full circle for us. Uh, Creventech Endurance Series returns with four events beginning in April. This is the Creventech. They say returning. I don't recall them doing it the first time around. Anyway, the full Endurance Series for them is going to be April 3rd at Circuit de Spa. June 26th at Hockenheim, newly released Hockenheim. August 28th at Barcelona, Catalonia. And then finally, August, October 23rd, excuse me, Sebring International. And they'll be running uh, GT3s, GT4s, and touring car in that combination. So another event going on for the endurance racers out there. So cool stuff. Uh, also very cool, the IndyCar iRacing Challenge returns with three races starting March 8th. This is, uh, they call it the, after a popular six-race run in the spring of 2020, iRacing and IndyCar have teamed up once again for the return of the IndyCar Racing iRacing Challenge beginning Thursday, March 18th. So that's uh, next Thursday, this coming Thursday at 6.30 Eastern Time. Three-race slate will see mini-series top drivers taking on popular tracks. So uh, this is the real IndyCar drivers. So we have a list of some of the drivers expected. Ed Carpenter, Connor Daly. Roman Grosjean, Scott McLaughlin, Joseph Newgarden, Pato Award, Simon Pagano, Alex Palou, uh, Will Power, Graham Rahal, Felix Rosenquist, and Takuma Sato are some of the ones that will be involved in this three-race series. Again, it starts March 18th at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, March 25th at Homestead, Miami, and April 1st will be their fan vote winner. So apparently we, the people, will get to vote for the final track of their three-race series. Interesting that they went to a three-race series that extends all the way, uh, I'm sorry, that, that runs real quickly. I mean, through April 1st, it was the endurance one, the, the Creva, Creva one that was uh, all the way out to October. Anyway, uh, three-race series instead of six this time around with the best of the best in IndyCar racing for real. Uh, this is week 13 for, I know a lot, you know, we, we, this show's about sim racing. I know we're a little eye racing heavy, generally speaking, but we do cover all sims. Uh, for those who are in the eye racing, uh, family, you would know that this was a big week because it's week 13, which means most racing has been halted. And in lieu of racing, we get our big update, our big build, our season, uh, uh, our four times a year seasonal updates by iRacing, very consistent with that. So uh, the latest, we saw some new content, we saw some updates, all that. One of the new things is the new 570S McLaren GT4 car now available. So here's a little write-up. I have some pictures of it. Whoop, there's the release note. So super late model upgraded. Uh, Catalonia now has a rally cross. Bark River International Raceway, a new dirt truck track, which I haven't tried yet, I'm dying to. Bristol Motor Speedway done in dirt, just like NASCAR is doing it. Uh, Hockenheim, Baden, Wurttemberg, Hockenheim. Uh, Hockenheim ring, I should say. Um, some paint shop overall, some, some up tire updates and a bunch of things. So a lot of updates in this, including that new content. Uh, here we have some shots of Hockenheim. I did turn some laps in the Ferrari at Hockenheim the other day. Uh, and, and it's a, a real fun track, real challenging track, Hockenheim ring. Um, and so there are some shots there of that. And then in addition to that, here's some shots of, uh, Dirt Bristol. Look at that. That's crazy. 
That's crazy. We are going to do some of that tonight, by the way. Tune in at the end of the show. I'll give you more details of what's going on tonight uh, with Bristol Dirt Action. Actually, I don't think I know what card combo. We're running Bristol tonight. Um, anyway, so that that's that. We've got the, the McLaren GT, uh, GT4 570. We've got Hockenheim Ring. Uh, do I have any shots of Bark? Where's Bark Park? Where's Bark Park? Bark, 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 Bark. Don't we have any shots of Bark Park? Oh, such little love given to the trucks. Well, that means I'm just going to have to go drive it myself. Uh, I would encourage you to... No, I've been really... Uh, I have to be honest with you. I've been a little... Disappointed in the amount of content. Yeah, you know, When iRacing comes out with a new discipline, and I think we saw this with Rally Cross in the beginning as well. Um, you know, cool. We have the new discipline. And then maybe it comes out with only two or three tracks. And it sounds great. But then, you know, four weeks later, you're completely bored out of your mind having only driven two tracks. I feel like the trucks, which, you know, you have the two-wheel drive, you have the four-wheel drive, you have the light version of the two-wheel drive. And very little tracks unless you use the rally cross tracks, which are quite fun. But they're different than the dirt truck tracks. So it's really cool to see a new dirt truck track. I've really been anticipating this, and it, I think it's a big deal for a lot of people who love the dirt off-road racing. It's going to really, you know, uh, give them a lot more. I mean, <laughs> give them a 50% a, a increase in tracks to use. Uh, partnership. I have another article on this, and I, I was informed by Next Level Racing via email, but uh, Next Level Racing and iRacing have partnered. So Next Level Racing made this post. We are excited to announce Next Level Racing and iRacing will be embarking on an exciting new partnership combining the world's leading sim hardware and software companies to bring you the most immersive simulation experience. That's all we get. Uh, what does it look like to me? I, I, it's a no-brainer. Uh, that looks like yet another, no offense, looks like yet another profile chassis. Now, this seems to have some kind of a finish on it. I'm not sure. Like, is this just part of the... I mean, it almost looks like it's covered in leather. I don't think it is. It'd be really impractical to have a, a slot and groove or a T-slot style chassis with leather involved in it. But I, it almost looks like stitching down here around it. I'm not sure. Anyway, all we get is this tease photo, but it looks like there will be an iRacing model of a next level rig soon to be. I'll get you more news on that as it comes out. I will question them. Here's an article at Adapt Sim Racing also talking about the same thing. Um, so very cool. I'll see if I can get some info on that for you guys. Uh, R Factor 2, um, they've been a little quiet. What do you know? After big news of the sale, it was kind of a quiet week in the R Factor camp. Uh, what did they talk about? They talked about some racing that was going on. I don't have any of the results, so it's one of those things you're going to have to follow the link. Again, when I do this show, my idea is I'm going to bring on the topics. I'm going to show you the topics, things that, that... You know, I have thoughts on, I'm going to add those thoughts, but for the most part, I'm referencing these titles, these stories from their sources so that you can go get the full story or watch the video or watch the race. And I have the link to every description of every article we're talking about, a link to every article we're talking about in the description of the show below here on YouTube. So be sure to check those out if you want to watch some of the racing, the Formula E that went on uh, yesterday, it looks like. Um, and then additionally, I thought we had a different race. Yeah, the RC, the GT series, I think, uh, Formula E, that's the one I covered. Uh, Roman Grosjean and Visor. Uh, oh, the World EX. The World EX Championship was yesterday as well. So again, you'll have links to those, and if you want to watch some of that. If you're at work, just trying to grind through the day, get to the weekend... Uh, maybe some of these videos will help pep up your weekend. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what, what else? Uh, John Armstrong, the real-life rally driver and uh, ambassador for Dirt, I guess we could call it. Uh, John Armstrong and Thrustmaster have teamed up to host a new Dirt Rally season with big prizes on the line. So they have a video here on YouTube that you can watch that will tell you everything that's going on. Um... I think this is an advertisement. Friends me. would walk up to me and just be like, what the f is in your mug? And I would...
back by popular demand, the John Armstrong Thrustmaster E-Rally Series 2 is here. In 2020, the first edition of the Thrustmaster sponsored series was a huge success and we've been planning on with Scotland and the 2000cc class then on as follows. First overall, we'll take away an amazing rally package with four items from Thrustmaster. Then second in the see, championship, we'll take the away prizes? the TSS H handbrake. And third, we'll take away the TLCM low cell. And on that link back at Twitter, there is also a compete. So here's the club and how you would uh, join. Um, oh, we're not logged in. But yeah, you would join the club like other competitions and uh, post your runs and you could win some cool Thrustmaster gear. Uh, NASCAR Heat, uh, another video or another race that you guys can go watch, I don't know. You know, I, I really wish that if they're going to plug the race that at some point they'd give us the results as well for those who aren't going to go sit and watch the entire race. Uh, that's a little gripe I have across the board. Um, I think iRacing does a great job of letting you know who won what races with their news thing. But I do find that most of the other sims uh, across the board, not all, so don't say, I don't, don't give me the one example who do, actually do give me a good example of the one who, do, the ones who do good jobs so we can, we can praise them. But uh, I feel like a lot of them tell us about the races, but then don't tell us what went on. Uh, anyway, if you want to watch it, they're three and four wide all night long at Auto Club California Speedway. In NASCAR heat, and you can go check that out. Hey, we just got a super chat donation. Tommy from the Bronx coming in with 10 bucks. Tommy, thank you so much. Much appreciated, buddy. Happy Friday to you. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, Forza. Forza is having an event. Uh, you have what it takes to race a pro virtually. Here, let's listen. Race against me. Or me. But what about me? Well, here's your chance. The DHL Race of Stars Forza Tournament taking place on March 20th and 21st. Drivers with the top 12 qualifying scores from each tournament get the race against us in the championship match. Space is limited, so make sure you register today. There you go. There you go. Now you have some Forza. Uh, going on. I heard uh, Forza 4, I don't have a story on it, Forza Horizon 4 went to Steam recently and I heard it was like their number one game on Steam right now is Forza Motorsport. Forza Horizon 4. Um, WRC now available on the Nintendo Switch. I think last week we talked about um, it coming. Now it is available. Um, it will be available in April 8th in Europe and April 27th in North America. Um, oh, I guess it's not available now. You can purchase, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. It is available now, as I said, at the Nintendo eShop if you would like to actually buy it in store April 8th in Europe, April 27th in North America. WRC 9 now available for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, earlier, I mentioned Bensi Bonky. Benicky, not Bonky. Oh, Sean, you're such a dip. Sometimes. Sometimes you are such a dip. Uh, okay. I, I confused who the... the Bensi Banky, not Benicky. I forgot there are two. Um, wait. Did I screw up? Uh, bear with me, you guys. I'm sorry. I have to make corrections here. Maximilian Benecke. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I almost have to send him an email. <laughs> I am so sorry, you guys. It's Maximilian Benecke, not Bensi Banky. Um, I don't know why I get those two confused like that. Bensi Banky. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's an announcement of Door Esports. And I guess this threw me for a loop because I was sitting there thinking, wait, Bensi Banky jumped ship from Redline to Door Esports? I saw a personal post by him. And I just totally mixed up the two drivers. Terribly sorry about that. Anyway, uh, here is the official lineup for Door Esport. Moritz Lohner. Lohner, he's huge. Bensi Banky, he's huge. Florian Haas, he's huge. And Michael Rick Rackel and Nico Noonan. Nguyen. And I probably should know some of them. And they will be working with the sport of two real-life drivers, Krister Jones and Ben Door. I'm assuming of Door Esport. So there you go, uh, another eSport team emerging. And what else? Fanatec, they're also making announcements. Fanatec is now working with, they've been partnered with Red Bull Racing ES eSport team 
providing the best equipment, taking it to the next level, and push the boundaries of the team's training with our cutting-edge sim racing technology. So, Fanatec and Red Bull Racing. You know, just a slight observation. Is it me, or did, like... Nah, never mind. Never mind. Let's, let's scratch that topic. Let's leave that for three wide. Tune in tomorrow for three wide and some thoughts and things going on in our world. Uh, Iberia Porto. Uh, this is the latest release uh, coming out of Euro Truck Simulator. So today they're taking a closer look at the Portuguese city of Porto. Part of that expansion pack and some cool shots of that that you can check out. Nice eye candy for your truck simulators. Uh, drivers. I was going to racers. Yes, yes. And in addition to that, Euro Truck Simulator are teasing the heart of Russia, the next, next, next expansion pack from them. Uh, gosh, soon enough. When, <laughs> when is it going to get so expanded that Euro Truck and ATS are essentially combined? <laughs> I know on, on American Truck, they really focus on a state-by-state -state thing. Uh, but you would think that at some point it'll start expanding beyond borders if it hasn't already. And then at what point? Well, I guess you can't drive a tro truck a a across the Atlantic. So I guess there's really no point in combining. The or it'd be very... They need ferry. They need Euro ferry. That didn't sound right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yep, that is our next story. Retro Toy Cards accelerates fourth. Italian studio bets on Hot Wheels Arcade Racer. Milestone, Milestone Games, is no, best known for retro circles for their Sega Rally-inspired Screamer series. Is Hot Wheels Unleashed a return, return to form? Look at some of the cars. Very Hot Wheels-esque. Is that a backward fighter jet with its... <laughs> there you go. <coughs> hmm. All right, so some of the cars that will be in this arcade racer. Oh, more cars. Let's check them out. Total Hot Wheel cars, aren't they? Never been a fan of those. What's with all of those? Why did they go to the extreme? Like, Hot Wheels has always had, like, two lines as far as I could tell. Like, the souped-up cars. Like that. And then, and which I always loved, the souped-up. But it was these that just always irked me. It's like, can we not... Can we not bring monster truck styling? <laughs> I, I, uh, where's the floppy dog ears? Anyway, uh, here's a render from the game. Milestone and Mattel working together. I, you know, I got to tell you, conceptually, I kind of love it. Um, obviously, when we were kids, the tracks were barely wider than the car to keep the car going straight down the track. Uh a racer version of Hot Wheels, you would expect it to be wide enough for two cars. But, yeah, I could see doing some really cool, super cambered, twisty corners, some jumps, some loop-to-loops. I think that could be quite fun. The big question, you know, the big question on a game like this, you know, I, I, I we play a lot of Rec Fest with my friends. And, in fact, on the 13th, that's tomorrow, I think we're doing some Rec Fest, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but... Uh, there's the argument over whether you need to play with the steering wheel or with the controller. And I argue play with whatever. Um, but I would really love to be able to... When I talk about conceptually I love the Hot Wheels game, it's really cool. And I'm sure it would be cool on a controller. But how cool would it be? And you tell me I'm wrong here. You know, Feel free to jump in, in the comments and let me know your thoughts here. But how cool would it be to literally play this in a... In a, in a simulation level i mean obviously yeah, a true hot wheels is plastic tire uh, wheels plastic track it's gonna be slippery af right um but what if we we kind of find that hybrid between a true good arcade racer that has really good force feedback so even if you're an alien level i racer extreme that you could still get in and instantly feel comfortable with the way the car drove you know i'm not talking about how accurate are the camber settings or the tire attempts or the brake or any but just that feel and and i think for for me when i when i bring up wreckfest as a great example here the original wreckfest before the port had a different force feedback and one of the things that i always praised wreckfest for was you jumped in and it just felt great just i mean it's like i don't want to argue whether it's sim or arcade or any of that that's not my point it felt natural it felt right it felt great um 
I'd love to see that of a Hot Wheels. Now, I don't think, I mean, my guess, I would not expect to even see wheel support. Uh, I think it'll be a controller game. I'm just sort of letting my imagination run and just thinking, hey, you know, it, it, it really would be kind of cool. Um, and maybe you guys are kind of missing the boat if you if you don't go that route. I don't know if they are or not. But maybe this has something to do with it. CBR posted this. Gamers are losing interest in racing games, even though they're getting better. Uh, the games themselves. Racing games are the most, one of the most important genres in gaming and only getting better. Yet gamers aren't as interested in them anymore. Um, you know, some of the biggest games in gaming have been sims you know racing sims you know gran turismo gran turismo made the play the playstation to an extent um i mean i'm not i i'm sure we'd have a different console out of sony at some point in time but i don't know I, the, the playstation's existence is in great part to the gran turismo franchise now I, I don't know if they depend on it today like they did back then but that is the case but you know you think of forza you think of need for speed these are you know, uh, these are the kind of titles that consoles will, will hold their release to get the right title. And many a time, it has been Forza for the Xbox or Gran Turismo for the PlayStation, being those headline titles. Um, but anyway, uh, this goes on to talk about some of the things that have changed. They talk about DLC. They talk about um, things like Hot Wheels and, and how there's been a slight change in the mentality um, maybe going more in a gamer direction or wanting some of those more gaming, you know, uh, sim racing is so removed from regular gaming and the way we do it, you know, we're not really into loot boxes, we're not really into the same kind of flashy tokens that you might pick up or, or those kind of things of other gaming, and I think that that's the thing that I took away from this article was that modern sims are going to need to be a little more gamey and a little less sim, for the masses and that's no surprise i think we as sim racers all know that sim racing is also uh inherently difficult to be great at um and i'm not sure that's not true about every game out there but uh let's see what else what else do we have here codemasters i can't read this article um ah i know what this article is about i don't have my translate on this browser uh they're talking about how codemasters is using in-game advertising and this is something to think about for the future especially as companies like codemasters get bought uh or companies like r factor get bought by different mentality groups you know you, you, you think of codemasters and you know once they made the transition to sim racing it's been all about racing games you know codemasters made all sorts of games way back when now they're just a racing game company uh, you think about uh, R Factor 2 and how dedicated the R Factor 2 team has been for decades to the sim racing community. Um, will their new parent company, Motorsport Games, still care uh, at the same level? Will their motivation be the same? Um, when I see this, so in the case of the Codemasters, and they're talking about Dirt 5 specifically, uh, they're talking about in-game advertising, the banners actually being advertisements. Now, in this case, it's semi-innocent. They're working with the NHS uh, in order to get the word out on COVID messaging, uh, you know, wear a mask, things like that. Um, but in the future, you know, that could say schnikey, you know. In the future, <laughs> that could say schlarbucks. I, you know, who knows where that line will end when new companies control the fate of that decision. Uh, Rock Paper Shotgun has an article here talking about another top-down racer. Circuit Superstars has hit the early access track. So if you're looking for uh, a top-down racer for some fun, oh, we got a little video. We'll watch a little video. I'll take a swig of coffee. This looks like an advertisement. Plan your pit strategy.
Oh boy, does a game like this bring back memories? Talk about retro. Oh, look at the trucks. They got all sorts of disciplines and terrain and tracks. This looks kind of cool, I have to admit. Um, I mean, I'm not a big top-down racer guy anymore. So it looks like it's on Steam for... This is in uh, pounds. 13, 17, 13 or 17 dollars. Depending on what you get with it, I'm assuming. Anyway, that looks kind of cool. It looked better. Honestly... It looked better than I thought. When I saw this and I saw the article, I was like, eh, and I almost didn't cover it. And then I watched the video, and I'm actually somewhat impressed. This looks actually really cool for a top-down racer. So if any of you have it or check it out, let me know what you think. What else? What else? This. Oh, another hamster ball. Do you want to get in this contraption? Here's things that I'll just never understand. I, I 8360 is the name of the company. Is this this is different than the one we that was crowdfunding? We, or like we are following one of these salad bowls we called it. This is a hamster ball. I'm assuming this thing can go all the way upside down. But here's what just kills me. What do you think that apparatus costs? I have no idea, but do we have a price here? Um I mean, but it's got to be really expensive, right? It doesn't say Elon Musk. <laughs> so, dorks. You dorks. You guys. Uh, Mayor of Wellington, Josh Lester, and founders, Terry and George. Um, anyway, okay, so getting back to my point here, this is quite the simulator mentality, isn't it? Now, obviously, you'd have no um, up and down. You'd have no left to right or forward and back. So you'd have all the twisting motions in the smoothest of ways but just no straightforward left right or up down uh anyway what kills me about look at that steering wheel i mean please forgive me but you guys couldn't get anything more than like a 10 year old cheap wheel for your testing of sim racing on your really elaborate room sized simulator it kind of shocked me <laughs> all right what else united racing data if you're looking for some acquisition tools you know gathering the data from our sims is one thing displaying it so that you can understand it is a whole other anyway united racing data makes a driver analyze and improve the latest telemetry tool you'll ever use the last telemetry tool that you'll ever use start now it's free they have over 465 tracks 462 cars world record tables stints laps driving minutes uh good for i racing a seto course a seto course a competition a project cars 2 race room r factor 2 and more so uh alan day three-time euro decal Nall guys giving some quotes on what it can do and it has some cool features and something you might want to check out if you're looking for data acquisition to make your sim racing. If you want to bring out your inner engineer. So here's an article here by Fast Company, and you would never expect to see it or hear about it here on the show. The 10 most innovative joint ventures of 2021. And you look at the name. So Kentaro Biosenses. I mean, what's, what what sciences? What's Sean talking about? Uh, Mount Sinai Health System, the New York-based uh, combines with Kentaro Bio Crocs for stepping in Crocs with Post Malone. Anyway, uh, Microsoft and SAS working together. But what's shocking, and you just keep scrolling down. Number eight, NASCAR and iRacing for speeding to swer serve fans for speeding beating to serve fans with a virtual series when sports had to hit the brakes. These are uh, companies working together during COVID, by the way. I think I missed that at the beginning of this. Anyway, uh, they go to, on to talk about uh, how 900,000 viewers for the 90-minute program um, back on March 22nd uh, at Atlanta dry, with NASCAR drivers. Anyway, it was just cool to see when they're talking about companies that have been working together kind of to achieve new goals um, in 2021 and quoting iRacing. We mentioned this last show with a teaser shot. Now we're getting more information. This is from Games Industry Biz. HTC unveils two Vive trackers. The new Vive tracker and the facial tracker will both launch in the U.S. this March. Uh, $129 from March 24th in the United States. The Vive tracker, that's for the tracker. The new facial tracker. 3.0, which is used to integrate real-world objects into virtual worlds, will have a 75% improved battery life, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's what we're seeing coming out of uh, 
HTC. I am still waiting on that next, next, next gen uh, VR. I'm waiting on, on a couple of things. I love VR. I really love VR. I don't even want to... It's not even an argument for me. Like, VR is awesome. Uh, I don't race it, and we can talk about that. But VR is awesome. That's exclamation mark. Um, but I am waiting on next, next gen. I'm waiting on uh, better refresh rate, better clarity, uh, better tracking, faster tracking, and a better game integration is the other key thing here. There are so few games that have integrated VR in a really natural way. Um, I can tell you that I love iRacing the way it races in VR. It, it really does. But there are other things beyond just the on track. I mean, VR represents challenges because you can't see, you're blind in your world. It represents challenges with things like our keyboards, our mice, integration with the computer as well. And I think when we get to the point where that is streamlined and easy to use to the point where like anyone could do it, that's when we're gonna really see a true VR explosion, but we're away from that. All right, let's look at some sim rigs, talk about some sim pit racing, and then get on with the weekend. Here is a G-seat torso mover. I have a G-seat, I love it in concept, what it can do. You can see these paddles, these side paddles. So when he turns left, his body, when he turns left, his body would be thrown to the right. So his sim and my G-seat does the same thing, is pressing on the right when you turn left, giving you those G-force sensations on something that we'll never be able to achieve in sim racing, that being G-forces. Anyway, this murder machine, mine is not quite as violent looking as this one, uh, but I will applaud him on a really cool um, idea. It's I've actually worked on my own version of GC um, in a research and development type manner. So I actually have firsthand experience, not only with my GC, but I've actually tried to build my own GC, uh, which, would have worked it needed some fine tuning anyway never got it actually operational um, but it is something that i've worked on really cool video you can check that one out look at a couple of rigs oh my god so this is post by magnificent first wheel how's this set up magnificent i don't want to give you a hard time but you've got to throw that wheel away you can get <laughs> no let me rephrase that if you keep racing and you find yourself really enjoying sim racing if you're watching the show um you can do a lot better than that wheel but wheels aren't super cheap i understand but that wheel is not helping you enjoy it so if you enjoy it on that wheel you're only going to enjoy it that much more daniel jason following the channel thank you very much daniel for jumping on new subscriber thank you so much i appreciate it you have yourself a great weekend uh let's see blood member blood ember his new setup specs in the comments um what i loved about this and it's hard to see the seat this is like this is like lounge chair uh, i mean like recliner chair you know you're sitting in your living room recliner chair uh rig that's what i really liked about this one <laughs> so i applaud you for that <coughs> this just this this station the reason i posted this by factoroni Totally not a Ferrari fanboy rig for his first set. No, not at all. Not a Ferrari fanboy at all, are you? Uh, what I loved here was just the overall massive clutter of being a PC gamer. Um, you see you see the hard drive dock in the background. I mean, you see cans of soda, cans of coffee. You see little plaques and certificates. You see all the things that are so normal in most of our lives. How many of you have a desk this cluttered? How many of you have this much crap around you while you're sim racing? I couldn't do it, but I have to admit, I've been there and done that. <laughs> and then finally, we got this. Oh, I'm not going to use the word. You know what we mean. Uh, blah for. Well, I mean, it works. Chair, wheel, and pedals aren't moving around anymore at all. What do you think? So let's look at his solution for pedals. <laughs> look at that. Is that a cinder block? holding his pedals i swear that looks like a cinder block it is those are literally like cinder block no nothing's gonna move is it well done well done maybe that's what you need to do does your stuff move if it is try a cinder block all right just a few more things and we'll bring this show to a close today sign up start today if you'd like to take part in the sin pit truck league running on thursday night this season we're focusing more on development and driver uh safety than we are on championship and, and like 
really putting a big uh, competitive series. There will be competitive racing. That's the nature of racing. But our real focus this season in the Simpit Truck Series is development, helping guys get up to speed, helping guys be better at oval racing in particular, and helping them be better at racing against others. So we're putting a lot of focus. We're going to have some coaches out there during practice for the races. If you're interested, sign-ups begin today. Look for the Simpit Truck League under the league section. Session league section on iRacing. Send in an application and we'll get you part of that group. In addition to that, on Sundays we have the Simpit. Way hey, 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 that's what I was racing. Uh, that's not. Uh, hold on, hold on. Bear with me. I'm so sorry. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Simpit Road Series. Is this the one? Yeah. Also, today are the signups beginning for the Simpit Road Series. So the Simpit GT3 Series, which is going to start up April 4th. Uh, we have a couple practice races to go, but if you'd like to race with us on Sunday mornings in the Simpit GT3 League, we'll be starting things off at Daytona on the 4th. And same thing, look up Simpit GT3 League, send an application, we'll get you up and running with that one. So Simpit Leagues are all getting ready to kick off. In addition to that, what, tonight, uh, Andrew White, one of our patron members, Andrew White, he is going to be hosting a uh a sim pit so he's gonna host a sim pit fun race at bristol dirt i don't know what car and i, I don't know what cars he's running i do know that at five o'clock my time so five o'clock p.m pacific standard time password will be given out on our discord channel so if you type in exclamation mark discord it should give you a link to our discord channel come into the main channel with the sim pit crew and around 5 o'clock, Andrew White will be giving out the password, and you can come run Bristol Dirt with the gang. In addition to that, tomorrow is 3 Wide. 3 Wide with me, Amir Saad, and Devin Booth. And we have some we have some topics tomorrow. You know, we recently had this whole thing with Mike Sim Racing 604, copyright infringement, and the changing landscape of being a content provider. That's a topic that we definitely want to talk about. Um, we also, oh, I just draw a blank. I, I had it all sorted in my head, everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, we were going to talk about pay setups. That was one of the things, um, we wanted to talk about. And then I think I also wanted to talk about some of the latest acquisitions. We talked about motorsport games taking over our factor two. We talked about Codemasters, uh, being acquired. Um, what is this going to do? Is, what are the pros? What are the cons? of all that going on. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., right here on YouTube, me, Amir Saw, Devin Booth, we're going to talk in great detail about those topics and maybe more. But that is going to do it for today's show. Tomorrow with the patron group, uh, the pit crew, we will be doing some rec fest. You're going to want to get in our Discord and find out about that. In addition to that, we do have a patron practice race coming up for our next patron race. This time, it's going to be a Seto Corsa. Corsa, not company. Assetto Corsa via Sim Racing GP. But that is going to do it for today's show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of the pit crew. And of course, subscribe to the channel here, The Sim Pit on YouTube. If you'd like to find more, we've got reviews. Another review coming out this week. Guaranteed another review this week. So you're going to want to tune in for that, want to subscribe for that. And if you ever want to watch my personal racing, it's all been moved to Sim Pit Live on YouTube. You can check me out. Sim Pit Live on YouTube. If you want to see what I'm up to out on track, that's where it's going to be done. But that's going to do it for this one get out there do some sim racing have yourselves a great weekend this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track hey where'd my obs go i need that to shut it down have a good one everybody